Hi there, I'm Carolyn with the Ohio Valley Museum of Discovery. And now I want to talk to you about seed dispersal. You have in your booklet a lot of pictures of different kinds of seeds, and you've probably encountered a lot of seeds, even if you didn't realize it. Look at your bag of seeds for the next activity in your booklet. What do all of these seeds look like? Are they all the same? Are they all different? What do you think? Now, I want you to go outside and see what you can find. Come on back inside when you're finished and we'll share what we have. So when I went outside, I saw lots of big brown balls like this. Believe it or not, this contains a seed. Inside of this husk, which can get pretty mushy and slimy, it's actually a very good natural dye. So beware if you're getting it on your clothes or skin. Inside of this husk is a very hard brown nut. Inside of this is a walnut that we can eat. You can buy walnuts in the grocery store or you can take these walnuts, our native black walnuts. You have to use a hammer or run them over with a car in order to get them open to eat the delicious walnut inside. Another really cool seed you might have found is one of these spiky balls. You've probably seen these everywhere. You maybe have stepped on them and said, ah, what is that I'm walking on? This is also, this also contains seeds. And between every little spike, you can see there's an opening. Each opening once contained a little tiny seed. And after these guys fall to the ground, and they dry out and turn brown like this and those little spiky parts open up and the seeds fall right out. This is from a sweet gum tree. It doesn't matter too much what your seeds are from. I just want you to look really closely at the ways they are different and similar. So the walnut and the sweet gum, they both fall right off the tree and eventually their seeds get dispersed. They fall out of the spiky ball or they get broken open by an animal and dispersed that way. Another really big nut that you might have found is this. Like the walnut, it has a husk on it, but this husk falls apart into four pieces. You probably, you've probably seen a lot of these little pieces around on the ground outside in the fall. This is one piece of that husk of that nut and inside of there is a hickory nut just like the walnut the hickory nut shell opens up the nut is exposed and animals like to eat them and disperse them something else you've probably seen a lot and you probably know what this is tell me what that is yes that is an acorn acorns grow on oak trees you've maybe seen acorns like this or some that are a little bit different or similar to this acorn. They're all, they all tend to be a little bit different. You maybe just find the caps like this, or you find the whole nut, or you find the acorn without the cap. And those also fall to the ground. Animals eat them, they get dispersed by animals. Now, something else that I am sure you've seen are these maple seeds. Right here is one little tiny maple seed attached to this very delicate little wing. And th using that wing, those fly through the air like little tiny helicopters. There are lots of other seeds around here that fly through the air like this, but none of them are quite as helicoptery as the maple seeds. Another way that seeds fly through the air is on little tufts of fluff. So maybe when you were out collecting seeds, you found something like this. This is a pod that once contained a whole bunch of milkweed seeds. Milkweed seeds are little brown seeds with a nice tuft of fluff on them. And inside a pod, there can be hundreds of little tiny milkweed seeds all nestled together until the pod is ripe and it cracks open and out come all the seeds and they fly away on the wind to find a new place for a milkweed plant to grow. 
something else that you may have found, this you can still find growing on bushes right now. This is from a sumac bush. And each of these little red berries contains seeds. The berries are a little bit fuzzy and soft to the touch. And a lot of birds eat these and disperse them that way. You'll also see just how many there are on this particular branch. This is very common for a lot of plants. They make a lot, a lot of seeds and then they have a better chance of growing more plants in the future. Something else that you may have found when you were out collecting seeds is something that looks like this. This funny looking thing contains the seeds for the Osage orange tree. This is sometimes called a monkey brain or a hedge apple and they can be different sizes. This is a smaller one and right here, oh, this one's so big I can barely lift it up. So these are both from the same kind of tree, the Osage orange tree, and these fall off the tree and land on the ground underneath. And generally, they just kind of rot away. They're kind of soft and squishy and sappy inside. And then lots of seeds for more Osage orange trees can grow. Other seeds, like the burr marigold, might stick on your pet's fur to travel around to new places and get dispersed that way. So we have wind can spread seeds around like our maple seeds. Animals can spread seeds around like our sumac or our walnut or our hickory or acorn. Some things just fall to the ground by gravity and their seeds just land in the soil and grow right near the other trees. Look at all of the different seeds that you have found and see what they look like. Think about how they might travel from one place to another. Look at their sizes, their shapes, their colors. If you can, you could cut them open and see what it looks like on the inside. Examine all your different seeds and think about the seeds that you might eat too. Seeds are everywhere. This is one of the most important parts of a plant's life cycle because this is how we can get more plants. After a flower is pollinated, a seed can grow, and then that seed germinates and creates a new plant that can grow even more seeds.